Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. We acknowledge the Nunga people as the original custodians of this land. The Lord be with you. A very, I think I should say, warm welcome to members of St. John Ambulance who are celebrating with us today and members of the most venerable order of St. John of Jerusalem in your wonderful uh, raincoats. It's very appropriate to wear them today. And celebrating because we're approaching the feast of the birth of St. John the Baptist, patron of your order. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us all from unbelief. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. On David's return from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant, Jesse the Bethlehemite. When David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was bound to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's home. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that he was wearing and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and belt. And David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him. And as a result, Saul set him over the army and all the people, even the servants of Saul approved. The next day, an evil spirit from God rushed upon Saul and he raved within his house while David was playing the lyre as he did day by day. Saul had a spear in his hand, Saul threw the spear, for he thought, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence and made him a commander of a thousand. And David marched out and came in leading the army. David has success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he had great success, he stood in awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for it was he who marched out and came in leading them. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time, see now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. 
but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights and hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, and die, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to, a children, as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Hear the word of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The ancient, hardwired human response to perceived situations of danger is called fight or flight. And recently scholars have added freeze and fawn to the list. But regardless of what we call the response, most of us in our lives have experienced a moment or two of panic. I am a very experienced panicker and can tell you that my first response to fearful situations is freeze. Not so good for being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, but great for Anglican liturgy, as being able to stay still is part of the job requirement. Regardless of how we act in our panic, I've noticed that most of us don't deal with it very well, especially if it is someone else doing the fight, flight or freeze. In my job as school chaplain, I spend a lot of time helping students work out ways to deal with anxiety. Many experience the panic that comes up unexpectedly while they are trying to survive teenagerhood, exams, friendships and parental expectations. It is a privilege of my calling to walk alongside students who yearn for calm and safety in their busy lives. Due to my experience with anxiety and anxious people, the story of our gospel today finds me feeling much empathy for the disciples. I completely understand their panic. Imagine your favourite teacher, your mentor, entrusting themselves to your care. Jesus has healed people, cast out demons, told parables and taught the disciples and now he wants to get to the other side of the sea. He gets into your boat just as he is. No travelling cloak, no supplies. He is tired and he promptly falls asleep in the stern of the boat, relaxed and vulnerable in his slumber. The disciples are in charge and being fishermen, they have sailing experience. So when the storm comes, they know what is at risk. There are boats all around, no doubt filled with men, women and children, unlikely to be able to swim. New devotees of Jesus, all wanting to go where he goes, to follow. All of a sudden, everyone is vulnerable. But Jesus sleeps. God in the centre of the storm is a recurring theme in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament. Terrible storms aid the liberation of the Hebrews from Egypt. And God re reveals God's self in glory to Moses in a great storm on Mount Sinai. Storms remind us of how small we are in the world, how vulnerable we are as human beings. Storms are uncontrollable. Storms threaten to tear apart our lives. They threaten our very existence. Storms can make us feel alone and helpless. King Saul, in our Old Testament reading today, is about to face a storm that will change his life forever. The choice he makes to defy God and Samuel and to cling tightly to his kingship empowers the storm to take his kingdom and the son he loves. Can you imagine Saul's panic at seeing another more powerful man being raised up to rule his people in his stead? Right in front of his very eyes, David wins the support of his people and the unshakable love and loyalty of his beloved son, Jonathan. David, of course, is not the storm, but nevertheless, David shows Saul exactly how powerless he is about to become. Saul's panic makes him unstable and vulnerable to the spirit of jealousy. I guess this, this is the part of panic that makes people nervous. When we see someone who is anxious, who might at any moment lose control, 
We fear what might happen next. We doubt our ability to help, to survive the storm ourselves. Perhaps we rely on those around us to remain calm so that we can say, stay calm ourselves. So many times I see people fade away or react negatively when panic arises, when the storm comes. But panic is a very human state and the storms of life come and go when we least expect them. I remember when I first studied the Gospel of Mark, feeling solidarity with the disciples in their panic and exasperation at the sleeping Jesus in the stern of the boat. I remember thinking, what lesson is he trying to teach them? Now when I read the passage, I notice something other than the absurdity of a man asleep on a cushion while chaos reigns all around. Now I see a God who not only calms the storm and weathers the panic of his disciples, but I also see a God who stays. A God who is in the boat, in the storm with them, with us. I see many people in boats, weathering the storm together. In their moment of panic, the disciples have not irrevocably and unforgivably failed in their faith and understanding. Rather, they have had a life-changing experience with the divine. Their panic is forgiven and dispelled by the God who stills the storm and stays with them to continue teaching and healing and calming and forgiving. That we have a saviour to do this for us in the storms of our lives is the good news that many of us need to hear. But the Gospel of Mark is a gospel that also reminds us that with the blessing of the presence of God comes a call, a responsibility to do the same for each other. It can be a difficult and scary thing to walk alongside someone in their panic, in their fear. But if we remember that God goes with us to calm the storm, we can find the strength to bear witness to those who are struggling with fear and uncertainty. We are not called to just get into the boat when the weather is good. That we are all in this together is something that like Saul we might forget. Being God's chosen people does not mean that we will all be ordained leaders or rulers for that matter. As the body of Christ, we are called to serve in different ways, at different times. Sometimes we might be fearful, one of the panickers, and at other times we will share the calm that God bestows on us freely and lovingly in divine presence and power. In the boat that is our church, there is room and safety and divine calm enough for everyone. It is in gathering together in unity and harmony, in care and with patience for each other, that we proclaim God's presence in the world. Today, we welcome the most venerable order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem as they join us in worship today. And we pray for St. John Ambulance. This wonderful order supports and represents the people who are trained to walk into storms of every kind, every day of the year. They can be relied upon to bring with them calm and care that speaks of God in the world and safety in the storm. We pray this day and always for their endurance and longevity and we give thanks for their service. Amen.
Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Pray for strength to follow Jesus. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. We pray for Kay, our Archbishop, and for Bishops Jeremy and Kate, and for Bishop Christopher of our partner, Diocese of Elderet Kenia. May we be servants of Christ to the world. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, unless you change and become humble like little children, you can never enter the kingdom of heaven. We pray for this cathedral church, for the dean and all who work and worship here, and especially for the work of the Cathedral Vergers, Stephen, Andrew, Simon and Darcy, and for Jake as he leaves the Cathedral Vergers to pursue his career. May the Kingdom of Heaven be known in our word and action. Saviour, we hear your call. Jesus said, happy are the humble, they will receive what God has promised. As our Saviour had no place to call his own and sent out his disciples with nothing, we pray for those who sleep rough on our city's streets this winter, for their protection and security, and for the ministry of St. Bartholomew's House an Anglicare WA among homeless people. May the kingdom of justice and peace extend from generous hearts to all in need. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, be merciful as your Father is merciful. Love your enemies and do good to them. We pray for mercy upon our world, challenged by a global pandemic. We pray for healing for the peoples of India and for all places where infections are resurgent, for equality of access to vaccinations in all countries. May the good news of salvation be found in acts of mercy and love. Saviour, we hear your call, help us to follow. 
Jesus said, love one another as I love you. There is no greater love than this to lay down your life for your friends. We pray for refugees to Australia on the World Refugee Day, especially for access to health care and education for children, for those who flee their homes and countries because of war, famine, or extreme poverty. May our hearts and the whole world be freed from fear and ignorance. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. We pray for St. John Eye Hospital in Jerusalem, supported by the most venerable order of St. John, and its work in relieving suffering among people of all faiths. We pray for St. John Trainers and their expertise and dedication in bringing first aid to many communities. We pray for St. John First Aiders and for paramedics and ambulance crews, giving thanks for their resilient presence at times of need and praying for all who are entrusted into their care. We pray for all who are lonely, the bereaved and the sick and the dying, especially for Karen, Joe, Sheila, Tim, Darren and Roz, Deb and Percy, and all who are on our hearts this morning. Saviour, we hear your call. Help us to follow. Jesus said, go to people everywhere and make them my disciples, and I will be with you always to the end of time. We pray for ourselves, for your church, for all whom we remember before you, especially remembering John Parker, Karen Spencer, Alison Dewsbury, and Pat Winnett, recently departed, and the year's mind of Joyce Atkins, Charles Riley, Archbishop, Arch Ledbetter, Joan Adams, and Francis Beaverstock. Saviour, we hear your call, help us to follow. God of mercy, you know us and love us and hear our prayer. Keep us in the eternal fellowship of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise, glory and honor be yours at all times in every place. Holy and loving Father, true and living word. We praise you that through your eternal word you brought the universe into being and made us in your own image. You have given us this earth to care for and delight in, and with its bounty you preserve our lives. We thank you that you bound yourself to the human race with the promises of a gracious covenant and called us to serve you in love and peace. Above all, we give you thanks for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, born as one of us, he lived our common life and offered his life to you in perfect obedience and trust. By his death, he delivered us from sin, brought us new life, and reconciled us to you and to one another. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with apostles and prophets, with holy men and women of every age, we proclaim your great and glorious name.
God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that we who eat and drink them, in obedience to our Savior Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may be partakers of his body and blood, and be made one with him and with each other in peace and love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again. We celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. As we eat and drink this holy sacrament, renew us by your Holy Spirit, that we may be united in the body of your Son and serve you as a royal priesthood in the joy of your eternal kingdom. Receive our praises, Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains, which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom.
gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Living God, in this holy meal, you fill us with new hope. May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue your saving work among us. Give us courage for our pilgrimage and bring us to the joys you promise. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.